you can now travel in exquisite luxury thanks to Regent Seven Seas Cruises. It's one of the most sumptuous ships ever built, but what amenities does this ship offer? How luxurious is it? Stay tuned! Cruises are a popular way for people to unwind, but not all of them live up to the expectations we want. Some cruises have cramped quarters, mediocre food, and uninteresting destinations, but not the Seven Seas Explorer. The new Seven Seas Explorer from Region Seven Seas has been dubbed the most opulent ship ever built. It costs $450 million to build and features hundreds of crystal chandeliers, custom-made Versace play settings, and 2,500 pieces of art, including works by Chagall and Picasso. How about we take a closer look at the ship? The ship has 375 rooms, all of which are exquisite. Even the most minor suite has king beds, separate soaking tubs, luxurious rainfall showers, and walk-in closets. Surprisingly, cabins that cost more than the veranda suite include walk-in between the sleeping area and the bathroom. This is unusual on a cruise ship. It's also practical because the upmarket dress requirement demands passengers to have some exquisite looks ready for dinner. No shorts or flip-flops allowed on this route at mealtimes. Bathrooms are also far from the industry norm. Everything above a veranda suite includes not only a shower, which is standard at sea, but also a bathtub, which is not. If you've ever been on a cruise, your bathroom probably didn't look like this. On the other hand, the smaller suite does not appeal to us. For the most expensive cruise experience, you and your spouse will stay in one of the ship's finest suites. Oh my goodness, they're fantastic! The Regan Suite, the ship's largest room, is 4,443 square feet in size. The master suite of the two-bedroom room is outfitted with this Savior number no. 1 bed. A bed costs $150,000, with the mattress alone costing $90,000. The room, of course, has a marble balcony with a hot spa where you can sit with your spouse and watch the surf. There's no dismal inside staterooms on this ship unless you're on staff, and many of them are generously sized and furnished with high-quality furnishings. A balcony's average size is 138 square feet, 12.8 square meters, an industry high. This is located in a superior suite in Port and Monte Carlo, Monaco. The rooms have high-end espresso slash coffee makers. Like many premium hotels, they leave it up to you to figure out how it works and what the colored capsules imply, but it is refreshed every day. Soft drinks, bottles of water, and a couple of cans of regular beer are also included in your price. Milk, on the other hand, is disregarded by your stewards. You have to pester room service to get it fresh, and there are times of day when you can't locate anywhere on the ship that'll serve you a cappuccino. That might be standard practice on another cruise line, but serious one percenters expect one percenter service. The room includes a baby grand piano and some genuine Picasso paintings, which provide a touch of elegance to the suite. There's also an ensuite spa with a steam room and a summer pool where you can choose between dry and wet heat. There's also a state-of-the-art jacuzzi and private massage tables where the ship's massage therapist can come to you. Speaking of massage therapists, there are unlimited spa services accessible while on board, whether in your room or at the ship's spa. The ship also has a luxury two-story theater, a dance floor, multiple pools and hot springs, a casino, library shuffleboard, and a golf simulator for entertainment and relaxation. And that's not all. The pool area spans two levels and has two spa baths, a bar, a grill with scooped ice cream, and giant cushion chaises. There's never someone shouting into a microphone to force you to party. Of course, there's a casino, though it's small, quiet, and discreet. It's geared around James Bond fantasies rather than penny slots. There are no children permitted here, but there are also none to evict. The line would never warn you that children aren't welcome, but it already has. There's no kids' activity center, arcade, or family pool. Any kid who ended up on this cruise would most of the time be spent in blazer and slacks feeling utterly bored. Let us not fail to mention the library. Libraries are being phased out on major cruise lines. They instead purchase drinks and bed than read. The Explorer, on the other hand, preserves a nice one. Even though the quality of the selection is more mainstream than academic, reflecting its clientele's preference for poolside books. But what about the meals? Well, there is food, of course. There are various themed restaurants available. 
The three main ones are the Chartreuse, which specializes in haute French cuisine, Prime 7, which specializes in grilled meats like steak, and Pacific Rim, which is Pan-Asian. There's also the buffet choice La Veranda in the evening, which is renamed Set Marie and features Italian food. This isn't your typical cruise with a buffet, this is five-star cuisine. There's a significant dining hall called The Compass Room and a reservation-only restaurant called The Pacific Rim. Each room has a plethora of selections, ranging from Korean barbecue to lobster, caviar, and Kobe beef. Did I mention it's all on Versace and personalized place settings? The Compass Rose is the default restaurant where most of your dinners will be served. Breakfast is provided here and upstairs in the casual La Veranda Buffet, which includes a self-serve caviar station. Aside from the accommodations, the ship itself is breathtaking. There are 158 chandeliers on board, and each deck has grand marble stairs and enormous open windows. The Explorer stresses cuisine even outside of the eateries. When customers are too experienced and wealthy to want a zipline or a skating rink, a ship must do it. The Culinary Arts Kitchen, located off the pool area on Deck 11, is a fully equipped 18-station cooking classroom for hands-on gourmet learning experiences led by renowned chefs. The theme is carried over into Gourmet Explorer Tours on Land, which are shore excursions that delve into local foods and recipes at various ports of call, complete with cooking and eating. Onboard cooks encourage these excursions, and their enthusiasm for local cuisine shines through. The majority of shore excursions, and probably the majority in each port, are included in the cost of the cruise. Gourmet Explorer Tours may impose a premium, beginning at $80. The lounge is another option. There are many places to sit throughout the ship, and unlike on cheaper lines, there aren't loudspeakers hammered into every accessible corner. That means it's simple to discover locations to escape. The Explorer lacks a low-level deck that allows passengers to walk around the ship while seeing the ocean. Instead, they must go to the top, but the interior salons are elegantly adorned with high-quality art, not schlock. A cruise on the Region 7 Seas Explorer may cost approximately $10,000. A single night in its total suite costs even more, and that's before the frequent two-for-one discounts that most guests appear to have taken advantage of. So, is it the most opulent cruise ship ever constructed? Do you rank it as the best cruise ship? Comment below, let's engage. Also, please leave a like, subscribe, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell. Lastly, click on one of these videos on the screen to watch another amazing video. Goodbye, see ya on the other side.